what about robots? So, is it possible to engineer? So, because you, you're really talking about like engineering life at the chemistry level, but do you think it's possible to engineer life at the like humanoid level, at the at the dog level, like or is that like at which level can we instill the magic of life into uh, inanimate stuff? No, I think you could do it at every level. I just think that we're particularly interested in chemistry because it's the origin life transition that presumably, or at least that's how I feel about it, is going to give you the most in interesting or deepest insights into the physics. But presumably everything that we do and build is an example of life. And the question is just how much do you want to take from things that we have now and put them into like examples of life and copy them into machines? Uh, I saw that there was this a tweet again. Uh, I think you were at the Mars conference and you were hanging out with a humanoid robot. Yes. <laughs> that was a fun Making conference. lots of new friends at Mars 2020. Did you guys color match on, uh, ahead of time with the robot or did that accidentally happen? Accidentally, I went up and I wanted to say hi. Turquoise, so they... would that be the correct name for the color? Yeah. I think so. Turquoise. We didn't color coordinate our outfits. Uh, well, you didn't. Maybe the robot did. The robot probably did. Much more stylish. Uh, so for people who are just listening, there's, <laughs> there's a picture of Sarah standing next to a humanoid robot. I guess you like them with a small head and perfect vision. Actually, no, I just... Um, Ooh, I did their perfect... There's a LiDAR. <laughs> no, I mean, I think I was just deeply interested because... Um, what was? Sorry to interrupt. Was it manually controlled? Was it actually uh, stabilizing itself? Oh, no, it, it was walking around. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. It was pretty impressive. I mean, actually, that there's some videos online of Jeff Bezos walking with one of those across the lawn nearby there. This is so, great. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but um, there you go. See, that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you look at the walking robot. Where did the idea for walking come from? It was invented by evolution, right? And us as human beings able to conceptualize and design and engineer so the causal chain. So that robot is evidence of life. And so I think what's going to happen is there's, there's the um, we want to find where the spark comes from mechanistically. How, how can you literally go from sand to cells? So that's the first transition. That I think, you know, there are a number of problems we want to do. Make life in the lab. Great. Then we want to make life in the lab and want to suddenly start to make intelligent life or life that can solve, start to solve abstract problems. And then we want to make life um, that is conscious. Okay? In that order? I think it has to happen in that order. You know, this getting towards this artificial general intelligence. I think that artificial general intelligence can't exist in a vacuum. It has to have a causal chain all the way back to Luca, right? Yeah. And so the question I think, I really like the question is to say, what are we, how is, how uh, is our pursuit of more and more lifelike? I know you want to, you like your robots, you want to project into them, you want to interact with them. You, you, I think you would want, if, if you have a robot dog and the robot dog does everything you expect of a normal dog and you can't tell the difference, you're not really going to ask the question anymore if it's a real dog or not, or you, it's got a personality, you're interacting with it. And so I think what would be interesting would be to kind of understand the computational architecture, how that evolves, because you could then you know, teleport the personality from one object to the other and say, right, is it act the same? Um, and I think that as we go along, we're going to get better and better at integrating our consciousness into machines. Well, let me ask you that question just so uh, to, to linger on it. I would, I would call that a living conscious thing, potentially, mm -hmm. I as a, as a human, allegedly. But you're, would you, as a person trying to define life, if you pass the Turing test, are you a life form? One of the reasons I walked up to the robot was um, because I wanted to meet the robot. Right. Right. So I, it felt like I was, and I, 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 I base a lot of my interaction with reality on emotion and feeling, but like, like, how do you feel about an interaction? And I always love your point about like, is it enough to have that shared experience with a robot? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so walking up to it, does it feel like you're interacting with a living thing? And it did to an extent, but in some degrees, it feels like you're interacting with a baby living thing. So I think our relationship with technology and particularly the robots we build is really interesting because 
um, basically they exist as objects in our future in some sense. Like we're a much older evolutionary lineage than robots are, but we're all part of the same causal chain. And presumably, you know, they're kind of in, in their infancy. So it's almost like you're looking at the future of life when you're looking at them, but it hasn't really become life in 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 a full manifestation of whatever it is that they're going to become. Mm. Um, and, you know, the, the more, in, uh, the example of the walking robot was super interesting, but they also had a dolphin that they put in the pool at the cocktail party at Mars, and it looked just like a real dolphin swimming in the pool. And, um, and you know, it's in this kind of uncanny valley because, and I was having this conversation um, uh, with a gentleman named Mutu who was super perceptive, but he was basically saying, like, it made him feel really uncomfortable. Um, and I think- The dolphin. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would have that response. And I guess m my point about it is, it is kind of interesting because you're basically trying to make a thing that you think is non-living um, mimic a living thing. And so so the thought experiment I would want to run in that case is imagine we replaced every living thing on Earth with a robot equivalent, like all the dolphins yeah. and things. And in some sense, then you're making, if you think that the robots aren't experiencing reality, for example, in the way that a biologically evolved thing would, you're basically making the philosophical zombie argument become real. Yeah. And and basically building reality into a simulation because you've made everything quote unquote fake in some sense. You've replaced everything with an emu a physical simulation of it. So the, as as opposed to being excited by the possibility of creating s something new, you're um terrified of being humans being replaced. I was just trying to run like what would be the absolute you know, thought experiment, but I don't, I don't think that scenario would actually play out. I guess what I, I think is weird for why we feel this kind of uncanny valley interacting with something like the robot dolphin is we're looking at an object we know is kind of in the future in the sense of like, if everything's ordered in time, but it's borrowing from a structure that we have common history with. And it's basically copying in a kind of superficial way, things from one part of the causal chain to another. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a video. Of... Everybody believed it was real. They look so real. Um, and obviously the technology was was developed for movies. So, Well, I think it... we're confusing our emotional response and understanding the causal chain of how we got there, right? Because a philosophical dot zombie argument thinks about um, objects just appearing, right? That you're facsimiled in some way, whereas there is... The cause, the chain of events that caused the uh, dolphin to be built, went for a human being. Yeah, would a uh, philosophical zombie still have a high assembly index? Yeah, because it came. It can't be philosophical zombies can't like like Boltzmann brains just can't appear out of nowhere. Well, I guess my question would be in that that scenario where you built all the robots and replaced everything on Earth with robots. Would the would the biosphere be as creative under that scenario or not? Yeah. No, and so, good. are there are there, are there quantitative differences you would notice over time? And it's not obvious either way, right? It's not obvious right now because we don't really we don't understand. We haven't built into machines how we work. So that's I think that the, there are the, one of the big missing things that. I think I, I, that we're both looking for, <laughs> this is right? A robot. It's a cute robot. <laughs> but the but the point there is that um, the biosphere won't be as creative if you did it right now. No, of course. But I think the, that's why people don't the, like it. But in the future, it we will be able to solve the problem of origin of life, um, intelligence, and consciousness um, because they exist in physical substrates. We just don't understand enough about the material substrate and the causal chain. But I'm very confident we will get to an AGI, but it won't be what people think. It won't be, solution won't be a, we'll get fooled a lot. And so GPT-3 is getting better at fooling us and GPT-153 might really fool us, but it won't have the magic we're looking for.